John Kenneth Galbraith, A Short History of Financial Euphoria A Short History of Financial Euphoria by John Kenneth Galbraith unveils the persistent cycles of financial collapse, inherent to the free enterprise system. In his book, Galbraith highlights the playbook of speculative euphoria, individuals and institutions seeking quick wealth, the soaring of asset prices, and the inevitable crash followed by public amnesia. He provides historical examples of tulip mania in the 1630s, the South Sea bubble, and the American stock market crash of 1929 to illustrate the repetitive nature of these catastrophic events. Throughout the summary, you'll explore the motives behind wealth accumulation and the psychological factors driving reckless financial decisions, ultimately leading to devastating consequences. The Perennial Madness of Speculative Euphoria Financial collapse is an inevitable consequence of the capitalist system. Driven by a desire for quick wealth, people and institutions engage in speculative euphoria, bidding up asset prices to unsustainable levels. Despite the warnings of a few lone voices, the majority continue to invest, ultimately leading to mass disillusion, crashed markets, and ruined lives. And yet, the ordinary investor never learns from these events, as speculative bubbles arise time and again. In this way, speculative euphoria constitutes a never-ending cycle of madness, a puzzle that remains unsolved. The Fallacy of Speculative Euphoria Speculative euphoria is not a new phenomenon and has some common traits. The first is short-term fiscal memory, where Wall Street experts render previous experience archaic and meaningless, portraying the latest speculation as a startling new find. However, the truth is, it's not special at all but is a minor variation on the standard model, involving the creation of debt secured by real assets. The second shared factor is the fallacious linkage between wealth and brilliant intellect. Money is seen as the accolade of a life well lived, and those who doubt this truth are seen as misinformed. The public and individuals close to giant financial institutions believe they can do no wrong. Only after a crash does their supposed special intelligence turn out to be specious. Tulipomania, the rise and fall of tulip prices. The tulipomania was the first financial frenzy that took place in Holland in the 1630s. The rarity and beauty of tulips, which first arrived in Western Europe in the mid-1500s, triggered a price hike over a few decades. In the 1630s, brokers and agents started trading tulip bulbs in the major stock exchanges in Amsterdam and other cities. The worth of a single tulip bulb reached the equivalent of $25,000 to $50,000. As the prices surged, the market attracted even otherwise sane Dutch citizens who sold their properties to buy tulips. When the inevitable crash hit in 1637, prices plunged, and merchants who had invested heavily in tulips quickly became impoverished. The courts refused to recognize tulip contracts, viewing the whole affair as a giant gambling enterprise. Depression seized Holland, but the tulips remained, and ironically, the country is now famous for its beautiful fields of tulips. The South Sea Bubble In 1711, the South Sea Company was formed to retire English government debt by issuing stock, which quickly gained popularity among investors including members of the aristocracy and the public. However, the stock price, which climbed to £1,000 by late summer, was built on speculation and dreams of quick riches. Other ventures tried to capitalize on the trend, including a perpetual motion company. Parliament passed the Bubble Act to protect South Sea's investment, but by December 1720, South Sea Company stock fell to £124, leaving angry citizens petitioning for vengeance. Nobody blamed the financial system itself, and author Charles McKay added that the people's credulity and avarice were at fault. America's Boom and Bust Cycles The American colonies used paper notes, causing citizens to panic when their notes turned out to be worthless. This continued even after winning independence. Speculation on land and other investments led to a real estate crash and depression in 1837 and panic in 1873. In 1907, J.P. Morgan helped troubled banks. 
Joseph Schumpeter accepted it as recurring, but then came the stock market crash of 1929. Will America's boom and bust cycles continue to repeat themselves? The Perils of Speculation The Roaring Twenties ushered in an era of investment opportunities and an American vision of get rich quick. The 1924-1925 Florida real estate boom was a prime example of this. People could buy home plots with only 10% cash down, and as prices doubled, Florida became synonymous with this fantasy. When the inevitable crash arrived in 1926, investors lost everything. Despite this, the Federal Reserve Board declared that it might constrict interest rates to temper the boom mentality, and Charles E. Mitchell, president of National City Bank, lent money to counteract these effects. However, as with any speculative episode, the end result was foreseeable. Few were able to see the writing on the wall as stock prices on Wall Street climbed constantly and investors feverishly bought more shares on a 10% margin. By autumn of 1929, things seemed particularly blissful for the investor class. However, stock prices began to tumble on October 21st and went into free fall on October 29th, leading to the Global Great Depression, which lasted much longer than normal and caused investors to take note of the dangers of speculation. Small booms took place in the following decades, but other speculative episodes also arose, continuing to show the perils of speculation and the lessons to be learned. Bursting Bubbles The book addresses the question of whether anything can be done to end speculative bubbles, concluding that probably nothing can be done. No government authority can prevent fiscal naivete or mass euphoria. It suggests that individuals should be cautious of investment opportunities that seem too good to be true and be skeptical of anyone who claims to have magic investment know-how, particularly those who possess a lot of money. However, the book admits that people are unlikely to gain this awareness and knowledge based on history's lessons. Galbraith demonstrates that the cycles of financial euphoria and collapse are an inescapable feature of the free enterprise system. Despite clear lessons from history, people often fail to recognize the warning signs and repeat the same mistakes. Individuals entrust their money to those claiming financial acumen, with their perceived brilliance being based solely on their wealth. The ultimate takeaway from a short history of financial euphoria is the significance of cultivating an informed skepticism. When it comes to financial ventures, especially those that promise miraculously high returns, past is, indeed, prologue.